Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using some artist trading cards in my journal to create a really quick art journal layout. So you can see on the top left corner I've already got an art journal page in my Use It Up journal that is almost complete and it's been sitting there for ages and I never knew what to do with it. So I was playing around making some artist trading cards and I thought, oh they'd look good sort of stuck into this page. Now it's not a technique I usually do. I don't tend to make things to stick into my journal. I tend to do everything on the one page. So this is something slightly new for me. So I'm starting off with some playing cards and gluing over some of the Dina Wakely collage sheets in the background. And I chose the one with the white dots because I really struggle using the white printed uh, tissue papers in my art journal. Uh, I love the theory of them, the idea of them, but they just don't quite work for me. So using it in the background gave me a good base for my playing cards. The reason I've glued the tissue paper over the top is playing cards have a plasticky surface on it, so it doesn't really take paint all that well unless you sand it off or glue something on the surface so it will stick to it. So I covered my playing cards with some elephant and blushing paint just to give it a bit of a colour in the background. and a little bit of a contrast to the background I'm working on. So that pink works really well with the deep blue in the background. The background itself is um, covered with night and has got some gold texture paste on it as well so um, and some white stamping from this, the Jane Davenport Squid Ink. So on my um, artist trading cards I'm using the ladder stencil from Dina Wakely and some marine paint and I'm choosing to decorate these two um, ACTs at the same time so I'm getting the same patterns on both of them so they look like a matching pair and all I'm doing is sort of overlaying different stencils and different collage mediums. Now when I did this I was very good and didn't put very much paint on my um, stencil when I was stenciling it but it was a little bit too light so I wanted to go back in and add a little bit more depth to it so I just went back and put a second layer of paint on and you can see again in my use it up journal I've got leftover paint so I'm going into another page and adding some paint to it. Next I'm going in with some eggplant and again my favorite stencil the medieval crosses and putting that over the top so you can see the overlay of the paints and the colours building up on top of each other. You can still see the stencils from below but again it's sort of just building up that extra layer and again going in and preparing another page for another day. So once I've finished that I'm just drying off my background and then I'm going to put one of the collage faces, oh sorry I'm going to do some stamping over the top just to add some extra interest in the background. As with a lot of my pieces, I tend to, when I've got a background, put some random text in it. It's just, I love the look of it. I don't know why, but if I have text on a page, it makes me happy. So I'm just drying that off. I use Burst Fine a lot. I find it's the blackest black for me, uh, but it does take a little bit to dry because it is oil-based. So while it is permanent and it's a great ink, uh, if you work on it too soon you can find it will smudge a little bit you, so you do need to make sure it's it's very dry before you start again. So I'm just trimming off the edges of my cards so they sit really nicely together and I'm cutting out one of the faces from the Dina Wakely uh, collage pages. These are the miniature uh, faces which I haven't actually used very much so this is a perfect opportunity to use it and I'm gluing down the face so it's half on both um, ACTs. Making sure it's glued down really well and because I have an issue with sort of that hazy effect I've made sure I've trimmed out around my image so I don't get that white effect around it. So once I've got this dry then I'm going to continue adding to it. So I'm going to stamp over the top, I'm going to put some scribble sticks on it just to add in some extra colour. So starting off with the base of blushing, bringing in that colour from the background and I'm just water activating the scribble sticks before I put them on. 
So I'm dipping them on the side, I'm sort of dipping it into water so it gets nice and juicy and then scribbling it on. Then I'm going in with some umber onto the hair. And I think I use fuchsia and some turquoise or a blue for the eyes as well. I'm going in with the paint pen just to make the paint uh, the eyes stand out. I find these images come alive as soon as you put the white of the eyes in it, so it just brings it to life. So using the fuchsia not only to do the face or the cheeks but to put in some of the shadows as well and then just do some really 80s eyeshadow because why not? It also picks up the colour from the background as well. So I, I really like the image together like that but I quite like the fact that it's going to be in two parts and you can pull it apart. And my idea is that one side will sit on one page and the other side will sit on the other page so it's like two, two pieces to the puzzle. So I'm getting out some of the Dita Wakely stamps and just stamping this heart onto the tissue paper. Again, I don't mind the backgrounds there and it actually gives a really nice effect to the stamping because the white dots turn pink with the red ink over the top. So you can sort of see the dots coming up in the background, just gives this added layer. And I'm going to add these hearts to her cheek. So again, layering collage paper over collage paper and the great thing about um, the Dina Wakely collage paper is it's so transparent or thin that it does go transparent quite easily. Next I'm just going in with the heart stamps and stamping over her face. Now the ink pad I'm using is archival ink and it again sort of seeps in really nicely into that collage paper so it doesn't kind of sit on top it seeps back in and almost retreats into the background but because it's such a strong color you can see it coming through and I really love that effect and it's certainly something I'm going to play with a lot more on my collage sheets because I've never really done that before I've painted over it and I've used the scribble sticks over it but I haven't then added stamping over the top as well to add something different and I just love the texture it gives to her face or the interest it gives to her face. So once I'd finished that um, I got these scribbly words from another Dina Wakely set which I stamped into the um, hearts so one says hold on the other one says be strong and now I'm going to put them onto my page. So I actually really like them just like that, but I wanted to pop them off the page somewhat. And again, I go back to the tissue paper and put some tissue paper behind it just to add a little bit of interest and give a bit of a border to the piece so it looks, stands out, I suppose, in some way, shape or form. I wasn't sure what I was if I liked it or not but I, I decided to go with it and I'm glad I did in the end because it does sort of frame those pieces and make them stand out from the background I think if I just glued them straight down onto the page um, it would have sort of blended into the background a little bit too much I really wanted these two cards to be the focus of the page and because I don't like a a cut line of course I have to tear around all the edges so obviously across the top and bottom when I'm tearing against the grain you can sort of get that really deckled edge where you're tearing with the grain you sort of get a much straighter edge which to be honest actually really bugs me I wish I could get that deckled edge around the whole thing if you wet the tissue paper with a little bit of water it does make it easier to tear and you can kind of control the tear a little bit more. If you just try and do it yourself, there is a possibility that you're just going to rip it in a funny direction. Um, so just be aware of that. So I'm just using some double sided tape to glue it down onto my page. And I was quite happy with that, but it just needed something else. So I got out this Stencil Girl stencil, which has got lots of different words on it. And because I've learnt from previous experience, just using some washi tape over the other words just to block them out means that you're not going to get accidental paint where you don't want it. So I'm going in with my sponge which was a little bit, I uh, had that eggplant on it already and I've just put some extra white out to make it a little bit more um, opaque 
and then just sponged out over the top. So I've got the Choose Magic and I thought that was quite appropriate because it kind of looked magic having the two parts of the whole um, because they're on playing cards, sort of all these different reasons why I chose those two words. Finally, just to pop it out from the back of the page, I'm going in and just doing a bit of a drop shadow around my letters just to make them pop out from the background again. And I'm really glad I chose to do that because it just finished off the page. And to do the shadows, I just put all my shadows on the left hand side and the bottom of all my letters. So this is a close up of the page. It was lots of fun to do. Of course, I just trading cards you can just make to trade with your friends as is, but if you've got some hanging around, why not include them into your art journal as well and make a page for them? Particularly if you've got a page in your cleanup journal you're not sure what to do with. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye.